Harriet Beecher Stowe was the name being chanted at a concert in Boston on the night Abraham Lincoln would sign the Emancipation Proclamation, which eventually led to the end of slavery in the US. A decade earlier, Harriet Beecher Stowe had published the book Uncle Tom's Cabin, a moving novel depicting the horrific reality of slavery. This novel gripped the public's imagination so strongly that it became the second best-selling book of the 19th century, just behind the Bible. But more importantly, it influenced people so strongly that it moved anti-slavery feelings from a small circle of abolitionists to a general audience. This led to the election of Abraham Lincoln, the Civil War, and eventually the end of slavery. And at that concert in Boston, as Harriet Beecher Stowe waved at the crowd from a balcony, they chanted her name because they believed her book had been a highly effective weapon in the battle against slavery. Stories are not just entertainment. They move people. And in some cases, they can change the course of history. And in this video, we're going to look at the magical science and art of storytelling. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jamie and I work as a coach and trainer. And my channel is all about leadership tips for influencing, communicating, and boosting productivity. And if you like the video, a like and subscribe will be highly appreciated. What was it about the book Uncle Tom's Cabin that moved people so much? Why is storytelling so powerful? The answer is transportation. Really good stories, not average stories, really good stories, capture people's imagination so strongly that they literally transport people to another world. As people read Uncle Tom's Cabin, they entered Uncle Tom's world. As they sat in their chairs reading, the real world surrounding them fizzled away. Not only were they in Uncle Tom's world, they were Uncle Tom. Every high and low, every injustice he suffered, every moment of torture he suffered, they suffered too. But stories will only achieve this result when the audience can relate to them. Readers of Uncle Tom's Cabin knew what it was like to enjoy freedom, have a loving family, and have hopes and dreams. They could relate to those details, which made it so much easier for them to imagine what it would be like to have all of those taken away from them. When a story is about the audience, a story will transport the audience. And when the audience come back, they will be changed. They will have gained new experiences. Those experiences will change their beliefs. And those will ultimately change their behavior. I was wearing a blue Hawaiian shirt. I just stepped off the train at Haywards Heath Station after my first day at Sixth Form College when my sister phoned and told me there had been a terrorist attack on the Twin Towers. It was September the 11th. If you were alive then, I bet you still remember to this day every detail of the moment you found out. These kinds of events are called flashbulb memories. Events so shocking, so significant, so moving that we remember every detail. Emotions are like superglue for memory. When we are emotional, it's a cue to our brains to start recording every detail of that moment because there's something important here. Imagine being a hunter-gatherer out hunting with your friend. As you're about to strike a rabbit, behind you, you hear a big roar, a chomp, and as you turn around to see what's happening, you see all that's left of your friend is an arm as you see a lion running away in the distance. That is a significant event. And in those days, you'd better remember significant events because the next time they happen might be your last time. Stories can work in the same way. As we relate to the person in the story, as we relate to Uncle Tom, we learn about his loving family and how close he gets to freedom. But then terrible things happen. He's separated from his family and he becomes the slave of a vicious owner who brutally tortures him. We go from a high to a low and a key word triggers it all. But. The but of your story is where everything changes. It's where planes fly into the World Trade Center. It's where your friend gets eaten by a lion and where Uncle Tom loses everything he cherishes. Relate to your audience first. Take them to a high 
and then drop them with a but. And you will trigger an emotional reaction and they will be able to remember every single detail. This morning, I woke up, I went to work, I did my work, then came home and went to bed. The end. That's not really a story, is it? A story is always about change. If everything's normal, there's no story there. Change creates stories because as far as the brain is concerned, change could either be a great opportunity or a serious danger. Imagine being a hunter-gatherer and going to the river to get some water, and all of a sudden you come face to face with a huge creature with claws the size of your face. You'd want to know, is this going to eat me or can I eat it? Then, on your way home, you find some berries you've never seen before. Again, you'd want to know, can I eat these or are these poisonous? So as far as the brain is concerned, change is significant. And this is why a story is always about change. One way of showing a change is the but part that we talked about earlier, where the character the audience relates to meets a challenge. But the story can't end there. The character has to change in response to the challenge. What action do they take and what does that lead to? This is where we get to the lesson in the story. What happened at the end of Uncle Tom's Cabin? I won't ruin the surprise for you, but there was clearly a lesson for the audience. And that lesson was about the need to end slavery. That lesson in Uncle Tom's Cabin was so powerful that it eventually led to the ending of slavery in real life. When you master the magical science and art of storytelling, not only are you able to change people's minds, you may even be able to change history. Start your story by introducing a character the audience can relate to. When your story relates to the audience, it will literally transport them into the story. Then when you are relating well enough, the character should meet a challenge. This is the but moment, when everything seems to go wrong for them. If you start the audience on an emotional high and then drop them with a but, you will trigger an emotional reaction that will make your story unforgettable. And finally, after that challenge, the audience want to know how the character overcomes the challenge. In overcoming the challenge, there is a lesson to be learned. And that lesson may even lead to your audience taking action. You can remember three words. Relate, challenge, resolve. Relate to the audience. Present a challenge. Show the resolution. This is the framework I talk about in my book, The Story Habit, how leaders shape stories that drive action. Check out the links in the description below to learn more about it. I hope you found that video useful. For me personally, I find it so interesting watching how other people have used Relate, Challenge, Resolve in creative ways to structure their stories. Try it for yourself. The next time you watch a movie or read a book, notice how they have used Relate, Challenge, Resolve and see what you can learn from that. And share with us in the comments below your favorite ways other people have used Relate, Challenge, Resolve. And if you found this video useful, then a like and subscribe will help me a lot. Thanks everybody and have a great day.